Tommy Daniels here with the head coach and general manager of your Allen American, Steve Martin. Say, Marty, September is approaching. Hard to believe. Uh, but yet we're watching NHL playoffs on TV. To me, I don't feel like we're in late August. Yeah, well, you, you do until you turn the TV on at night. I mean, at least it's not the daytime games anymore. So sure. um, it's nice to have it after having such a long break. It's just frustrating being watching the playoffs instead of being in it. Do you think this year, because, you know, there's no home ice advantage for any team other than getting the last change, but there's no crowd in there, that it's affecting some of these series? And if a team gets down, because I've seen a lot of 4-1 series wins this year. If a team gets down, it's hard for them to come back. Yeah, I think, it, I mean, it, 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 the only good thing is it's the same for everybody. You know what I mean? So everybody's in the same boat. But, yeah, you don't have that, you know, you don't have that roaring of your crowd to get you – get that adrenaline going and you you got to depend on yourself for that and your teammates. So it's a little bit different, but you know, like I said, at least it's the same for everybody. How surprised are you at what the, what the stars are doing right now? And obviously Dallas, Colorado, a lot of people thought they might be the best team in the entire league and in the stars beat them up pretty good the other night. And they're up to nothing in the series. Yeah, you know, it really reminds you of, you know, I, I think the things that change momentum are, you know, obviously a goal can change momentum and a good power play gives you those goals and, you know, and then hard hits. And, you know, I thought it was a pretty soft call to give them the five on three, but they took advantage of it. And, you know, they got those two quick goals because they were really getting outplayed until they got the yeah. two power. Play. Then boom, they, you know, then they got that momentum. And, and you know, that might be the case where, you know what I'm saying? You have to generate your own momentum, and they certainly did that and then and then took off from there. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed watching these games, and I know the biggest complaint from people is, hey, why are you starting them so late? You know, with no fans, you could play the games in the, in the morning or the afternoon. I understand it's, it's marketing and TV and everything, but the late starts, especially the Dallas, the, the teams that are playing from Edmonton at night, they're not getting over until 1230 Central Time. So if you're trying to watch one of those games in the East, you're talking about almost 2 a.m. until the game's over. Yeah, no, I, I, have, I have not stayed up every night to finish games, and I just check the scores in the morning. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't really look into it. You know, I, I didn't – you know, I, originally I first thought it's because, you know, 1030 start is, is I guess, typical if you're on the, on the West Coast. But – I don't think there's as many fans watching from the West Coast. I would imagine it has a lot to do with NBC and, you know, what, you know, that, you know, what times they, they had the slots available for sports is my guess. I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, a big signing uh, for us uh, yesterday and uh, Nolan Neen, a kid from Duncan, BC. I'm going to have to ask him exactly where Duncan, BC is, but um, you know, he comes with good credentials and I, in your quote yesterday, you talked about what you like and what he's going to bring to our lineup. Well, he's another guy that can play, you know, any way you want to play. He's a really, you know, he's like, a, you know, I don't know, you know, we didn't have as many hitters last year. Obviously Cole Fraser hits like a truck and he's like that. He hits hard and he can move the puck and make plays and he's good offensively and, you know, a good leader on the team and, uh, he can drop the gloves once in a while if, you know, and, and, and one of the things that I noticed is in, you know, in today's game, I mean, all the times that he got into a fight is after he had a big hard hit. And, you know, so I think he's going to be a crowd favorite and, and uh, I think he's going to help us uh, get back to where we, we want to be where we were last year. And he's, he's only 21 years old. So he's really young. So he's still developing. And I know you like those guys that, you know, much like an Alex Bretton who came in here very young and watch, you know, guys like him develop. Um, and I don't know how, what his, what his height and weight is. I need to check with him. Hockey DB still has him listed at 5'11", 180. So you would imagine that's probably. Yeah, I think he's more like numbers. six feet, 200. You know, he might be just a little under 200, but he's wow. strong. He's got a good build. And, you know, like I said, he's tough. He's just a really good all around player. And I, and I, you know, I think that was the one thing we were lacking a little bit last year, you know, as guys that were, you know, I thought we were good offensively, obviously, but I thought we needed to be a little bit greasier. And it's nothing that anybody didn't hear from me throughout the year. You like the guys from the Western League and, and Zane, who is Zane Franklin, who we signed last week, uh, was, was also from the Western League. 
is and I know we signed a lot of players. We have been, you know, over the years uh, since you've been here. Do you, is that a favorite league of yours? Do you like the style of playing the Western League? You know, it's just the we like to have, you know, like I said, X amount of guys that carry the water and X amount of guys that chop the wood. And the and the Western League typically has more of those types of players. Um, and then we're a West, you know, we're out West too. So it's, it's easier for them to, to be here. It's easier for family to watch. And, and it's, I think it's just an easier fit all the way around, but, you know, we've got a few guys that are signed that could see games with us, you know, from, from the Western league major and Meacham Meacham's an ex Western league player. So they'll have a pretty big, uh, you know, because Otten Bright's from the Western League, Detzel's from the Western League. Um, I'm not sure about some of the other guys because, you know, we're running out of spots is the other thing. And, and Costello's still on the sidelines and Archibald's still on the sidelines. So we got enough in, in guys Chad, to start the season, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chad's in town. He, he called me the other day. I think he's wanting me to buy him lunch. But, you know, and obviously he's, he loves Allen. You know, whether he goes to the Europe or not, I guess that's going to depend on what kind of an offer he gets. But, you know, you kind of get the feeling like if, if he ended up playing here this year, that would be just fine with him because he loves, he loves Texas, wants to relocate here after he retired. Yeah, really, it's just a money thing. I mean, it's a money thing. It's something that, you know, it's like what anybody would do if you have an opportunity to – make more money because we have a salary cap and, and, you know, that's just the way it is. And, and the European leagues don't have that, but he's dealing with budget crunches and over there with, you know, due to COVID and, and, and a lack of signing the, the top players. So, um, you know, it's the, it's the old thing that they'll go for the right price, but they're not going to go, you know, for similar money and, and put everybody through everything, of, you know, cause living in Europe is good for some people. And, you know, obviously when you have four kids, it becomes, you know, but, you know, I think only a couple of them are school age right now. So anyway, if we get him, we get him. And if we don't, uh, we don't. A lot of people message because he was a popular player last year asking about Alex Breton. And, and has he signed? I haven't seen his name come up anywhere for signing. If he's talking to some teams in Switzerland. Yeah, he's waiting on Europe. I mean, I don't see Alex coming back to us. I don't see him signing a straight ECHL deal. I've talked to him about going to a different camp and um, you know, but I was a little bit surprised that he hadn't been offered, you know, it, it's just a tough year. There's a lot of American league teams not signing any players right now. And, and right. Uh, you know, Iowa, Iowa, you know, kind of has some, one of the most amount of players signed. So, you know, we're sitting in a good spot that they have depth and, and it should help us. Now you bring up a good, uh, point there about the American Hockey League and I was listening to sports talk the other day on Sirius on NHL Network and they were talking about the American Hockey League and would they play if, if they were not allowed to have any fans in the building could they do that well I mean I, I mean we're not going to play if we have not allowed fans and nobody's going to play but I, I don't think it's going to ever get to where you're not allowed to have fans I don't know what the NHL guys are talking about that you know next December is a long ways away from right now. And a lot of things can change. And, you know, once we get through the election and it'll be interesting to see how they report on everything then, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big believer in everything I hear on the news, um, depending on which network you're on. So, um, you know, I think that the American league, you know, they may have, they may have to play with, you know, with, with limited fans, but, the NHL, you know, they're they're not going to just let all those players just sit out all year if they're playing. And the NHL, right, I don't yeah. think, is planning on playing without fans. Yeah, and they there was even a scenario talked about where not all season, but there may be a scenario where the NHL may start the season in the bubble with like eight different locations hosting games, and then if you know eventually move out of that bubble again, well, that would be that would be really interesting if that happened. Well, you know, I mean, we, we, we really don't know where we are with vaccines. You know what I mean? I mean, they're fast tracking. There's a, there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of investment in the vaccines. And, you know, you can't get a straight answer anywhere. You read one thing and, you know, you got to fact check the fact checker. It's just a nightmare. Right. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Once the election is done, you know, who knows if you'll start to get some actual reporting. But right now, I mean, I don't believe anything I read and or, or see on the news and, and I, I have to fact check everything I read. Last thing for you, how the workouts going? Are you, are you, I know how you are when you're here 
in hitting the gyms, do you take a little bit of a break when you're there in the off season while rest? No, uh, no, actually, I, I did work out harder because you got to do something. You have to have something competitive. I'm actually yeah. going to St. Cloud uh, Friday to play in a golf tournament. I did a Zoom call with their team. So I'm, I'm making my first alumni uh, appearance there since I played college hockey. So uh, I'm trying to take advantage of a few other things. But no, I'm, I'm hitting the gym seven days a week, actually. I got to keep up. Have you seen a picture of Matthew Chuck? Yeah, well, you know what? That. He. He told me, he said, I asked him, I said, I heard you're a workout machine. And he said, I'm going to surprise you when I come back. So I haven't seen him yet, but I've heard that he's, uh, he's really trimmed his body fat. Not that he had much. Well, he's, he, he, he's lean. He's always been lean, but he's massive. I mean, he's, he's huge. And, and he's always been a weightlifter. He's always been, and his fiance, I always see her at the gym. Um, so, yeah. you know, it's something that they buy into but anyway they yeah he's he's the, the guys that like to hit the weights I mean all this off time I think you know we'll see uh see some of these guys come back I mean I'm, I'm sure Jared's going to be in in you know he's another he's another workout horse so the serious guys yep. I think are going to be uh you know really in, in top physical shape when are we going to see you when are we going to see you Alan I'm actually going to be in town on the um September 4th, 5th of holiday week, and my daughter has leveling tournaments. And then we're trying to determine what, you know, it looks like it might be more ice in Dallas for my son. He doesn't start camp until I think September 17th or 18th or 20th or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'll be back and forth a little bit and then be in Dallas. So, but I'm, I'm coming in town just for that weekend, like four or five days. Well, Marty, thanks for doing this as always. Safe travels. Good luck in the golf tournament. We'll see you back in early September. All right. I haven't golfed. I haven't golfed since I think we had, since we were in the Central League in one of our golf things because, you know, I had to get my shoulder replaced. So I have, I keep saying I got to go out and hit a couple of balls, but I haven't even swung a golf club in like eight years. Well, it's I got to tell you this. They got thing for you. We have a new girl in the office, Brittany, uh, who handles our tickets. I took her out last Saturday, her fourth time ever on the golf course. She got a hole in one. Really? On a par three. Jesus. Yep. So that's you got a, you that's got a amazing. Of, uh, you, got, you got a lot of work to, to live up to those expectations. Marty, thanks for doing this. All right, Tommy. Talk to you later. Have a good week.